And welcome back to the Stitch Along. I'm your host, Mikey. And in today's episode, we're gonna kick you off on this beautiful Stitch Along together with you. In this particular example, you're going to notice is that there is the same motifs, they're just colored differently. And you're gonna find the color breakdown available on our downloadable that you can download. What's really exciting though, is that there is a little check sheet that you can just check it off on your list and you can see where everything's placed. So on week number four, when you're putting everything together, you're gonna know exactly where things go and you can check it off. And it's also an easy way to be able to see the colors. Throughout this whole stitch along, you're gonna be using Karen Jumbo Twirl and with a six millimeter size J crochet hook. And without further ado, let's head on into the studio and let's get started. Welcome to the studio and in today's episode we're going to be doing two things. We're going to be doing the rippling pond hexagon. You can see that it's going to ripple out and we have a total of six of them. Three are one color so one two and three are the same color and one two and three are a different color and then we're also going to do the rippling pond half hexagon and you can see them right here and so there's two different colors there so these two match and then these two match. And so we're gonna be able to do that. So I just need to demonstrate it one time and then you can just change the colors throughout. And so we're gonna be using on camera today, the Karen, Karen Jumbo Twirl. And so half of them are gonna be sky blue ribbon and the other half are going to be here, the canal ribbon. And it's a beautiful yarn and you can see it's gonna be really cool. So let's grab our six millimeter size J crochet hook and we're gonna start with the rippling pond hexagon motif first. So here's our first hexagon that we're going to do. So we're going to be doing six in all. So we're going to do three in one color, three in a different. So we have a nice crochet diagram to be able to get yourself started. I have to caution you as you get further out though, we need to fasten off completely and then restart at a new spot in order for all of it to be able to hexagon itself out, which is not a big deal. So let's grab our yarn and let's begin to start right from the very beginning. So let's play and let's get a slip knot ready. And we are going to chain a total of five. So one, two, three, four, and five. And slip stitch to the beginning chain all the way back here and form the center ring. So just yarn over and pull through and through and you have the center ring. When you go to operate then the first round, you wanna wrap the straggler around the center ring so it gets stuck underneath and therefore you won't have to weave that in later. Let's begin round number one. Let's begin by chaining fives. One, two, three, four, and five. And this will count as one treble and a chain one space. Going back into the center of the ring, put the straggler so it's around the ring and just wrap the hook twice and apply a treble into the center chain, uh, ring again. So pulling through two, two, and two. And then chain one, and then keep applying these trebles in. So wrap twice and in. So I need you to go all the way around so that you're having a uh, total of 11 double crochets and there'll be chain one spaces, but with this chain uh, four that you started with in the beginning because it was chain five. The first four is considered a treble. So you will have a count of 12 of these spokes all the way around. So please do this all the way around and I'll see you at the end of number one. So I'm coming close to all the way around. So I chain one after this one here. If you're running out of space because you're going into the ring, you can just pull on it and provide more space for the center of the ring if you need it. So I'm going to put in my last one. And don't forget to chain one after you get that done. So I chain one. So you should be able to count 12 of these spokes. So let's count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. And I need you to slip stitch to the fourth chain up. So we did chain five. We're only going to go to the fourth and we're just going to slip stitch through and through. And therefore that'll create that. If you went up over top of the straggler like I did, then you can just turn it around and trim it. Good to go. And you're ready for round number two. Round number two, we need to get ourselves to this chain one space first. So we're just gonna slip stitch on over first, and then this is where our story will begin. You're going to chain three, which will count as your first double crochet, and you're gonna double crochet back into that same space again. You are now going to chain one, and then jump to the next space right here, and put in two double crochet.
and then chain one, and then into the next space, two double crochet. So please do this all the way around for round number two. I'm coming up around and I'm just gonna chain one after the last two are in, and then I'm just going to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. Now here's the thing. You should have 12 groups of two that are now going around the circle. So you should be able to count the groups of two. So let's move on to round number three. Let's begin round number three. We have to get ourselves to this next space right here. So we need to slip stitch ourselves across this first double crochet and then into the space. You were then going to chain up three. That counts as a double crochet and you're gonna double crochet again into the same space. Now you're going to notice is that you have two double crochets that are side by side. You're only gonna use the first one and apply a double crochet into that space. You're now going to chain one and then you are gonna to skip to the next space and apply two double crochet into there first. So we have one and two, and then just use the first one of the next group of two only and double crochet, and then followed by a chain one. So skip to the next space, two double crochet to start, and then a double crochet into the first one only, and then chain one. Please continue this all the way around for round number three. Coming around on number three, I have my two into the same space, one into the first one, I'm gonna chain one, and then just join to the top of the first, chain three. And let's move on to round number four next. Round number four, we're currently sitting in the wrong spot and we need to slip stitch ourselves to the next chain one space. So just come across the tops of the double crochets and go right into the next space. And that's where the start story is going to start. So we're going to chain three, that's your first double crochet, and double crochet back into the same space. This time, see how there's three grouped together? You see one, two, three, they're not into the same space, but there's just three. You're just gonna use the first two only and just double crochet one into each. And then chain one, and then skip the last one and then go into the next space. So the next space will have two double crochet in it first. And just use the beginning two of those. So just one into the first two. Okay, and then you're going to then chain one and keep on going all the way around. I'm coming back around. Don't forget the chain one after you have your last double crochet in and then just slip stitch it to the top of the chain three. And that was that round there. Let's move on to round number five. Round number five, we're currently sitting in the wrong spot again and we need to get to this first chain one space right here where I'm wiggling my thumb. So we're just gonna slip stitch across the tops of the double crochet to get there and go right into the space to begin. So now we're going to chain three. So one, two, three, and you're going to double crochet into the same spot and see how there's four. You're only going to use the first three. So just double crochet in the first three only. So we have one, two, and three and then chain one, and then skip the last one and go right into the space with two double crochet. So we have one and two, and then use the first three only. So one, two, and three, and then chain one. Please do this all the way around for round number five. At the end of number five, just make sure you chain one after this group and then just slip stitch to the first one right here. Let's move on to round number six. Round number six, we need to get to this chain one space right where I'm wiggling my thumb. And so we're just gonna slip stitch across the double crochet. We're then going right into that space to start and then you'll chain three to begin and then double crochet into the same spot. So this time you're gonna see a total of five in the group before the next space, use only the first four. So we have one, two, three, 
two, three, and four. And if you're confirmed on your counts and you trust yourself, you can just not count and just make sure you skip the last one out too. So chain one and go right into the space and put two double crochet in. And then just use the first four of the next grouping of five. So we have one, two, three, and four, followed by a chain one and continue that all the way around. This is round number six. I'm coming up to the end of number six here and I'm just gonna chain one after I have this group done and then just slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Let's move on to round number seven next. Number seven, we need to get ourselves right to this position here. So that's right, we are going to slip stitch ourselves across the double crochet to get there first. And we're starting to see the spiral happen on our sample. So that might be getting you excited as well. You can let me know in the comments. So get yourself there and then you're going to chain up three and double crochet into the same spot. So we're looking here, we can see that there's six, you're only gonna use the first five. So we're just gonna skip this last one like we have been. So just one double crochet into the first five. So one, two, three, four, and five, and skip that last one of that group, chain one, and then starting your next chain one space. So two double crochet to begin. Okay, and then you see the next grouping of five, so just, or the next grouping of six, just use the first five. So one, two, three, four, and five. Skip that last one there, chain one, and start over again. So please do this around for round number seven. Coming up around on number seven, don't forget to chain one after that last group is in, and then just slip stitch to the top of the chain three. Let's move on to round number eight next. Let's move on to round number eight. This is the last time we're gonna be going in a complete circle as far as keeping it round shape, and then the next rounds after this will be then starting to turn into hexagon. So we need to get ourselves to this first space, so you know what to do at this point, just slip stitch yourself across. and then come into the space and that's where you're gonna begin. So you'll chain up three to start and double crochet into there. So this time you're seeing a total count of seven of these double crochets, only use the first six. So you're gonna skip that last one. So we have one, two, three, four, five, and six, so skip this last one, so chain one first, and then come into the next space, two double crochet. So we have one and two, and then just use the first six of the next seven that you have. So one, two, three, four, five, and six, chain one, skip the last one and come right to the next space and continue that around. This is round number eight. Coming around to number eight, I'm gonna chain one and I'm going to slip stitch to the top of the first chain three. So we need to fasten off at this point so that we can start in a fresh spot in the next beginning. So we're just going to trim the yarn. I'm highly recommending that you use a tapestry needle to be able to weave in the end. So just pull it through to lock it, turn it to the back side of your motif. So anytime you need to do that on this particular stitch long, just weave in your back, uh, the ends in the back side. So just coming through and just drag it through the stitch work. Don't allow the needle to go through to the good side of the work. Just stay within there. And the best way to really weave in the ends is to make sure you capture plies of yarn, not just going in between the strands. Okay, and so you're just going to weave back and forth a total of three times. And when you pull on it, don't change the shape of your, your motif. 
So we still have a few more rounds to do. And now that you can understand how this thing is growing out, you really can see the spiraling happening as well. So let's begin round number nine. Let's begin round number nine. Let's start off in any one of these chain one spaces. Just pick one. Um, and if you're happy with it, you can even pick the one that you just went over, did the slip stitch with as well. So we're just going to attach your yarn and then chain three. So one, two, three. You're now going to work across your double crochets just like you see here. And you're just gonna go across and just double crochet one into each. So you don't hear me counting because you technically kind of really don't need to count. You just got to look for the visual signs. But if you wish to count, um, you can find that information on the pattern if you, if you need to. So I'm filling in the spaces, just the double crochets, they, just like you see. We're now going to hit the first chain one space and we're just going to ignore it and pretend that it doesn't exist and then jump over and start the double crochet on the other side of it. Okay. So we're just gonna fill these all in and I'm gonna get myself to the next space. So you're essentially creating a flat side by doing what we just did by jumping over the middle like that. We're now into the next space here. So this space is going to be your, your corner. So we started off technically in a corner. And so this will be our next corner here. So you'll double crochet into the space, chain one and double crochet again. You're then going to continue along. So the corner will be over here. So you're going to double crochet across the tops of the next section here. So just keep double crocheting in each. And because it's the middle of a side, you don't want to create a corner with the next space that you have. Okay, so skip this space, go right over to the next double crochet. So you're jumping over and continuing across. And then here is your next corner. So it'll be a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet into the same spot. So please do this all the way around and you're going to see this starting to turn into a hexagon. And I'll be right back in a moment. I'm coming all the way around here on number nine, going right into the same space that I started with to create a corner, chain one and slip stitch to the top of the chain three. So I would do a quick verification if I were you to make sure that you have your your points in so you should have flat spots just like you see and then you got your points on the corners make sure that you have the hexagon uh, formation by just taking a quick look at it and then we're going to move on to round number 10 next from here on it's smooth sailing for rounds number 10 and 11 they're both different from each other so let's just start number 10 we need to get back to this spot right here so we're going to slip stitch in the previous chain one space to begin and this is where we're going to start our story so we're going to chain two which will count as your first half double crochet and then you're going to half double crochet in each of the stitches all the way to the next corner so all the way to this corner here and in the corners you're going to put in a half double crochet chain one and a half double crochet and all the rest of the stitches in between are just going to be half double crochets so please do this all the way around for round number 10. Coming all the way around, I'm going to half double crochet into the first space that I started with, chain one, and I'm just gonna slip stitch to the top of the beginning, chain two. Let's move on to your final round for this motif, number 11. Number 11, we're going to slip stitch back into this space right here. So just slip stitch backward to get back there and then chain three, so one, two, three. And you're going to apply one double crochet in each of these half double crochets here. And then in the corners, it'll be one double crochet, 
chain one and one double crochet into there. So you're gonna have this going all the way around. So just start with the very first one. Remember this is a chain two, so it kind of looks like it's hidden. So don't forget to use that one and then just continue to double crochet in every stitch. And in the corners, it's one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. Please do this around for round number 11. I wanna give you a little mini tip. When you use half double crochet, and depending on which side of the double crochet or the half double crochet that you use, in my case, I always use the space just before. So do you see the space? This one here is part of this one. This one here tends to get buried, so I have to move things out of the way to get my first double crochet in. So just don't forget to do that because when you come out and you have the one just before the corner, I always use the space just before the post and never the space after. So you have to determine which one you're gonna do. So that would be my recommendation. And you see when people, uh, when they're transitioning from a half double crochet to a double crochet like this, it's very easy for them to um, not realize that they might be skipping a stitch or adding anything extra. I'm finishing up round number 11, coming into my very final space where I started, and I'm gonna chain one and I'm gonna slip stitch to the top of the chain three. This is the end of the journey. This is where you're going to fasten off and weave in your tails, just like I showed you with the tapestry needle. So now what's gonna happen is that you need a total of six of these. So I have one of this color done, so I need to do two more of this color, and then I have to jump over and do three more of the other color right here in the canal ribbon here in this color. So they're just slightly different from each other, and it's really quite of cool. So I'm gonna show you the half uh, hexagon uh, rippling pond next and we're going to begin this. We use video chapters in these videos so you can uh, just scroll on back and be able to restart this one just in case you need a refresher on what to do. Let's begin the half hexagon next. Let's begin to do the half hexagon and this is the rippling pond as well and so you're going to notice that, that these will ripple out. We're going to be going back and forth in the rows so we don't uh, fasten off at the end of a row to restart to continue to go in a continuous revolution. Nice and easy, and let's begin using your same size crochet hook, a six millimeter size J, and we need to make a total of four of these, so two of one color, two of the next, and see the pattern for the color breakdown if you need that. Let's begin this motif. Let's begin this motif with the slip knot already on the hook, and let's begin to chain five. So one, two, three, four, and five and slip stitch to the beginning chain to form the center ring. And as you do row number one, just lay the straggler down on top of the circle right here in order to hide that underneath. Let's begin row number one. Let's begin row number one. You're going to chain five, which will count as one treble and a chain one space. So one, two, three, four, that's a treble and the fifth one is a chain one space. In the center of the ring, apply a treble, so wrap in the hook twice, go right into the ring and trap the straggler underneath that as well. So you need a total count of seven of these spokes. So chain up one and then treble again here. So you're gonna uh, technically apply um, six trebles, but with the chain four here that you had from the first chain five, that will give you the number seven. So don't forget the chain one in between these as you're going across. So this is done as rows. So once we get to the other side, we're gonna turn our work. So I have one, two, three, four, five. I'm already counting that, that beginning chain as one of them. Just helps me to be able to zoom through faster and chain one and do it again. So I believe I have seven spokes that you see seven posts. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Once you're confirmed, and if you went over top of the straggler, turn around, get rid of that straggler. And so after this is done, turn your work, and let's begin row number two. Row number two, right where you're sitting, you're going to chain three. And then in the next space right here, you're going to apply two double crochet. So one and two chain one and go to the next space right here and put two double crochet in there, followed by a chain one 
and then continue to do that all the way across the semicircle. So just two double crochets and a chain one, and I'll be right back and I'll show you how to finish this in just a moment. So I'm coming around, I've already got my two in here between the last chain and this post. And then you're just going to, on the fourth chain up, so one, two, three, four, you're just gonna apply a double crochet right into the chain work and that'll hold that out. So you should be able to count a total of six groups of these two. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you have this, the double crochet there and there. Turn to work and let's begin row number three. In row number three, we're going to start making ourselves into the hexagonal sides and there's a total of three because it's a half hexagon. So before we waited to, we were really big before we did it, but now we're going to start it now for this one. And we're going to chain three to begin. And then in your next double crochet here, you're going to apply two double crochet in there. And then in the next double here is just one double crochet. The next space here is going to have two double crochet. The next two double crochets right here will have a double crochet each. And it's going to be this next space right here is that we're going to apply a turn so a corner. So we're going to apply one double crochet into that space, chain one and one double crochet. Okay, so now let's go and we're gonna create a flat top side now. So we have the side, we're now gonna do the top. So starting in the next two double crochet, you are going to apply a double crochet each. The next space, there will be two double crochet in there. The next two double crochet, there will be a double crochet in each of those. And it's gonna be this next space, which will be the next corner. So then that'll be a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet. So now we're gonna complete the final side that we're gonna start building out. So the first two will be a double crochet each. The next space will have two double crochet in it. The next double crochet will just be one double crochet by itself. The next double crochet will have two. And finally, the turning chain will have one double crochet right into the very last turning chain. And that was that row. And you're gonna turn your work and we're going to begin the next row now. Row number four. We're going to chain three. That's your first double crochet. And the next one will have two double crochet into the same stitch. You're now going to provide a chain one and skip the next double crochet and you are gonna double crochet yourself all the way to the corner turn. So you can either count it out if you want to, you can look at the pattern for that if you want that, or just look for the next corner that will come up, which is the easiest really. So you go right there and then the corner is next. And so in the corner, you'll apply a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet. So to start a fresh side again, you're gonna double crochet into the next one, chain one, skip one, and then double crochet in all the remaining until you get to the next corner. So the corner is next right here. And so it'll be a double crochet, chain one and a double crochet. So you'll start a fresh side. So you'll double crochet the first one, 
chain one, skip one, and you're going to double crochet all the remaining except for the second last stitch, which I'll show you in just a second. So we still have to build this out on the flat edge so it stays flat. So you're looking for the second last double crochet, which is next. And you'll put two double crochet in there that helps it to grow. And then in the turning chain, you'll apply one double crochet right into the chain work itself. And that was that row. So you're now gonna turn your work and let's begin the next row. Row number five, chain three, that's your first double crochet. And then the next one will have two double crochets in there in order to keep that flat side flat. So the easiest way to do this is see this chain one space, you are going to go all the way um, until we get to the st stitch before it. So right here. So we stop at this at the stitch before this last one. So here's the space. We're intentionally going to skip this one. So I'm just going to show you. So we just keep double crocheting then until we can see that space. And that space is, is the ripple pond work itself. Okay, so there's another double crochet, then a space. So chain one, skip this double crochet and go right into the space. And now continue to the corner. So in this case, there's two double crochets before a corner. So in the corner, you'll apply double crochet, chain one and a double crochet. And again, the same principle. So you're just gonna start and double crochet, I guess until the second last one before the space. So because you're turning your work every other row here or every row, uh, that positioning changes. And I'll show you that when we get to the next row. So we're going to skip this double crochet, chain one, and go right into the chain one space. And then continue to double crochet until you get to the corner. So now your corner is double crochet, chain one, double crochet. And then same principle going You're just going to start double crocheting. And you're looking for that space. Okay, it's right here. Okay, so there's the space. So I want to skip this one. So chain one, skip over that one double crochet right into the space and then you are going to double crochet into the next stitch and then this is the second last stitch so you'll put in two double crochet to keep it flat and then you'll finally go into your turning chain okay so let's turn to work and begin the next row number six so now that we're starting to get this established, it's gonna get easier for you to see it. So you're going to start off number um, six here in chain three and put two double crochet into the next stitch. So you'll be able to see the direction of which the ripples are going into. So the ripples are heading in this direction. So you're going to, as you start this, you're going to double crochet then the next until you get to the space. So go right into the space itself. Chain one, skip the first one, uh, the first one out, and then just continue to double crochet the remaining. Okay, so these should all be heading in the same direction. And so we're gonna hit our corner just momentarily. So you go right into the corner, so it's a double crochet, chain two, or chain one, sorry, and then double crochet. So now we're looking for this rippling effect right here. Do you see it? 
So you're just gonna start in double crochet and you are gonna go right until you hit that space. So go right into the space, chain one, skip one here and double crochet there. Okay, come into your corner, double crochet, chain one and a double crochet. And we're looking for where that space is right here. So we're gonna double crochet until we get to that space. So fill in that space, chain one, skip the next one out and double crochet in the next. So what do we need to do on the second last stitch? Did you say that we need to put in two double crochet? And if you did, that's the right answer. So in the second last one right here, put in two double crochet into the same stitch that keeps it the edge flat and then double crochet into the turning chain and then turn your work and we're ready for number seven. Let's begin row number seven chain three to begin and yes you are putting two double crochet into the next one and we need to look to where that spiral is happening okay and you can see it's going in this direction so we're going to want to make sure we skip the one after the space in order to keep that direction going so let's just keep double crocheting until we get close to that space So to keep the space going in this direction, we're going to continue right until we get to the space itself, fill that in, chain one, and then skip the first one after the space and go right here to the second one. And therefore it keeps that rippling going in the same direction. So we're going to go right until we get to the corner. chain sorry double crochet chain one double crochet and then we look again for where this rippling is happening so we need to keep it going in this direction so we're going to continue to fill it in with double crochets until we get close to that spot to do an examination of which way we need to go if you can tell visually on which way to go it's going to save you a lot of counting Okay, so I want to continue to go in this direction. So I'm going to fill in that space as well. Chain one and skip the first one after the space to continue that momentum of the rippling going out in the same direction. So you'll do this till you get to the corner. To your corner, go right in. It'll be a double crochet chain one and a double crochet in. And now we're looking for the rippling that's going out in this direction. So let's continue to fill in those double crochets until we get closer. So we're pretty grateful really that there's not a lot of spaces that are here to make it overly complicated. So it's, it's a good easy repeating to understand this pattern. Okay, so we go right into the space, chain one, and then we skip the one after the space to keep the momentum of the rippling going in the same direction. So we keep going right into the second last stitch because what are you doing in the last second last stitch? Yeah, that's right. You're putting in two double crochet in the second last stitch because you want to keep it flat. So put two in here and then your turning chain you'll put in one double crochet. Let's turn your work and begin row number eight. 
Let's begin row number eight. So we're not using double crochets on this round, we're only using halves. So as we begin to do this process, we're going to start off and we are going to chain two, which will count as your first half double crochet. And in the next one, it's like the double crochet, you just put in two half double crochets there. So we're looking to where the momentum is going for the ripple, it's going in this direction. So you can see all sides is happening with that same idea. So you're just gonna half double crochet until you get close to that space. Okay, so I'm here, the space, I wanna fill that in with a half double crochet. I wanna chain one, skip the next double crochet out and half double crochet the next. And that'll keep that going in the same direction. So I'm going to go all the way to the corner and in this one here, it's going to be a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet into the corners itself. Okay, so here's your corner. So a half, chain one and a half, and then continue and look where the, the rippling is going. So let's continue to fill these in with half double crochets until we get close to that chain one space. So we're gonna go right into the space itself, chain one, skip the next one, and half double crochet the next. Okay, so come right in here, chain one, and half double crochet. So the corner is a half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet. So continuing along on the final side, look for the, where the rippling is going into and just continue to follow the same rippling effect. So just get closer to that chain one space and then you can make a decision, which is the same decision for everybody. But if you can see it, it'll just save you count from counting. So go right into the space work itself chain one, skip one, and half double crochet the next, and you can instantly verify that you've gone in the right direction. So what are you gonna do on the second last stitch before the end? That's right, you're gonna put two half double crochets into the second last one, and then in your last turning chain, put in a half double crochet. And turn your work and get ready for number nine. Number nine, you're going to chain up three, it's your first half double crochet, and then starting in the next stitch here, you are going to then put in two double crochet. Then you are going to just look to where direction the spiral is going into. So we're going to have to get and double crochet ourselves close to where that chain one space is. And we need to skip the one just before the space. Okay, so we need to skip this one. So chain one, skip this one and double crochet into the space. And that keeps that spiraling going out. And then we start and we start going all the way to the corner. So on the corners on this row will be one double crochet, chain one, one double crochet. Okay, so there it is there. So this is your corner. So double crochet, chain one, double crochet, and then just continue to go starting right here. And you're looking for that chain one space. So you're gonna skip the one before the space to keep that momentum going in the same direction. So 
So chain one. Okay, and getting close to the space. So this is the one before the space, so I wanna skip that one. So chain up one and go right into the space with the double crochet. And we can tell that it's going in the same line and then start double crocheting then to the corner. In your corner is going to be one double crochet. Chain one, one double crochet. And then start again on this side and looking for that space. So this is the last one before the space. So chain up one, so skip this one, go right into the space. You can verify that you're going in the same direction and then start and continue again to the edge. So the one before the edge will be two double crochet into the same stitch and then one into the turning chain when you get there. Okay, so the second last one here, you're going to have two into the same and one into the turning chain. And let's turn your work and begin the final row, number 10. Row number 10, you're gonna start off by chaining four. This will be a treble, so one, two, three, four. So that counts as your first treble. And in the very next stitch, there's gonna be two trebles in, that share the same stitch. So here's the secret for this row. There's no longer any more spaces. So you're just gonna to continue to treble into each stitch until you get to that space. So when you get right up on that space, right in the space itself, put in a treble to fill that in and then continue with trebling in the next stitch so that you're eliminating out those stitches. When you get to a corner, the corners will all be the same for this, uh, row, uh, for this row and it will be one treble, chain one, one treble, and then continue to treble all the way across which includes the chain one spaces and I'll see you close to the end of the row in just a moment. When you get close to the end here on row number 10, the second last one, as always, will be two stitches into the same. It's two trebles in this case. And then you have one treble into the turning chain. And this is where this block ends up stopping. So this motif stops. So you're gonna to wanna to weave in your ends to be able to finish this off properly. So I've already demonstrated how to do that earlier on in this tutorial. And you see you have a relatively flat edge. So let's talk about what you need to do next because you need to do a total of four of these. So there'll be two of this color and then two of your other color that you will had if you're following the color breakdown here. So you can see it's slightly different from each other. And 
it's also recommending that you get a piece of foam board to be able to uh, pin down the edges. So what you want to do is just do damping. It's called uh, damp blocking. So you're just going to want to pin down your edges to the to the foam board and then just kind of put in a wet um, like dishcloth over top of it and just let it sit there for a bit and then just shape it with your pins to hold it. And then you can take that off and let it air dry. So don't soak it completely, just let it get damp. And therefore you'll have this and you wanna do that with all of your motifs with this one here. So once you get all of your hexagon rippling ponds, including these half, hacks, hack, half, hacks, <laughs> half hexagons, then you can actually get that done. And therefore that'll be ready for joining then on week number four. And this is a really cool concept and we hope that you're enjoying and we'll see you next week as we continue our stitch long together with you. I'm your host, Mike, from the Crochet Crowd. Bye-bye.